Hello there and welcome to Off the Press. This is the program where we take a look at the national dailies, uh, understand it and make sense of it, dissect the headlines as much as we can. And of course with me to do this this Monday morning is our in-house analyst, Ekene Ezeji. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you here yes. this Monday morning. It's a pleasure to be here in right. the house. In yeah. the house. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it in-house style. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, several papers here, but we'll be beginning with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed. And it says, power crisis, consumers demand sanctions against discos. That story is on page 31, thankfully already displayed there. And APC can handle a do crisis, says presidency. That's on page 20. And Senate summons a mefile over multiple exchange rates on page 41. Federal government secretly strips health ministry of procurement power on page 10. And on January 31st, not bothered closure. Um, but terminal date, according to the customs boss there. That story is on page 32, I believe. And then NDDC owes ghost contractors 300, 3 trillion naira, says director. You can find that story on page 20. Now, the big story on the Punch newspaper is land grabbers occupy farm settlement as governor, governors neglect agriculture. That's on page two, you can see it there. And multi million naira equipment sold as scrap tractors looted. Undo losing a revenue at Okitifupa Oil Palm Estate. A military government sold farmhouses as well. That story you can see on page two with a picture story, I believe, of. Um, um, the place that they are talking about there. Now, federal government using public resources for Malami's private suit, according to plaintiff, is on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. And again, police arrest soldiers, civilian for kidnap, kidnapping and robbery is on page 5 of the Punch newspaper. One killed, scores injured as robbers evade, invade Ibadan on page 4. And then and down here, you say, but on secular road ready in 2022, says contractor. That story is on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. And then church worker nabbed for taking girlfriend's nude picture. Interesting. On pages four and five, you find that story. And Dangote plans fuel exports to Europe and others on page 32, I believe, of the Punch newspaper. Okay, then where do we begin from this morning? Well, I mean, there are two stories that jump out at me, so I'll okay. just... I'll note them so okay. that if I forget, then you will remind me. Them. Yes, the I one, the one that the agri, mm -hmm. the, the agri story about the farmers or the people who have gone to occupy, so mm. to speak, and then the discos, the people who are asking for them to be sanctioned. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll start with the discos. Okay. Um, power is is a big deal. If First of all, are you happy people, with the power? Power. Of course not. <laughs> and if you look at the figures, they've privatized for now six years, mm -hmm. and in that time, you see the do you say the discrepancy or the deficit between what is projected mm -hmm. and what is actually being achieved. Apparently, as at November second, we're looking at just slightly above three thousand megawatts, megawatts, which means that anything could drive it to. We're now looking at under three thousand. You know, you now be saying two thousand something. That's this is with the That'll projected. Yeah, I projected, um, you know, this output of more than 8,000. That's the projection. Mm -hmm. And now you're looking at, you're, you're practically just scraping into 3,000. Um, so, of course, people aren't happy. And they're feeling it because they're not getting the power. But having dug a little deeper in mm -hmm. recent times, because I'm very interested in the whole power sector thing, because a lot of people feel that if we can get the power sector right, right. A lot business of will thrive, you'll get more foreign investment, mm -hmm. things will flow. And if you talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who are trying, even ex you know, um, foreign entrepreneurs who mm -hmm. are trying to make a go of it, the one thing they'll say, if you say what are some of their challenges, it, the first or second thing that will come out of their mouth is mm -hmm. power. Improve because a lot power. of the money spent on power, if they could find a more efficient way they're happy to pay more over mm -hmm. time. It's just the unpredictability of having to, you know, pay generator costs, diesel. service your generator, diesel. Those are the things that make you can't plan with that kind of output. So That's true. whereas if you had a steady tariff or whatever you know you're paying, you can estimate and then it's easier to plan. Mm -hmm. So yes, they can do much better. What we're beginning to see, which I'm looking into in more recent times, is they're beginning to target certain areas, like now they've targeted, since August, targeted Magudu, mm -hmm. and in more recent times they've targeted Maryland in Ikeja. And they're basically ha raising the tariff for these people who have agreed within a contract. they have constant supply? Yeah, they've signed a contract saying they'll pay a higher tariff, so whereas they were paying maybe 20 naira per megawatt 
hour mm. they're now ready to pay for as much as 47 naira per megawatt mm. hour with the guaranteed you know 22 plus hours of light without having to run your and job. that's been working out for them apparently i mean mm. the people in my said this is the best thing someone a resident who's lived there for 22 years according to the the article i read said this is the best thing that's happened to my mm. so they, they feel like they're living in a different world it's altogether. actually getting value for, for it is for but money. obviously we can't stop mm. there because what you're looking we at is only the elite so what happens to the rest of the country who sure. can't afford the higher tariffs? Mm -hmm. The natural thing, and again, speaking to a power expert only this morning, is that if they were to monitor these things properly, the profits which they doubtless will make from that steady income, they should plow it back in and they should distribute it among not just the people who are distributing, mm -hmm. but also the generators, also um, the production. You know, so you, along the chain, there should be a format, and apparently there is, but whether it will be followed through, of sharing this profit so that everybody makes investments in their own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you then keep building capacity to the point where even if you, you, ta you tax the higher people, you give the, high, the more people who can afford it a higher tariff, it will then trickle down. You don't sure. have to levy those who can't afford it. So maybe in Ajegunle, you have a lower tariff. Mm -hmm. But the end game is that everybody gets constant power. It, it's doable because it it's, there is demand mm -hmm. for the supply. Mm -hmm. you, I, I think you're yeah. catching the vision. Yes, I mean, I like so the way it's, you've, it's exciting. you've broken it down and yeah. make it quite, you know, seem that like it's not rocket science. It's not if, really. If and, and we do the right thing, As we'll long get as the, the right corruption result. thing doesn't come and plug, mm -hmm. you know, block up the, the, the chain. And so all forms of sabotage we've seen in recent yeah. time. If, you if know. we can just stick to the, the script, everybody wins. It, it's actually doable. It's actually yeah. doable. Okay, so your second story is... Uh, I agree. In a way, it's a similar theme in the sense that here are people, because we know a lot of money has been invested in the agricultural sector, even if it's just to get more rice in, you know, now we're talking about rice, rice, <laughs> rice. Yeah. Uh, money has been, apparently, the amount of money sunk in in more recent times is more than was put into um, education and health. Mm -hmm. so I think it's more than three trillion of the budget. I mm -hmm. hope I'm getting it right. But it's more than, you can, you can at least be assured of that. And yet, we're not seeing the output. They are saying that they haven't, you know, the investment, they haven't seen it, which is why they've gone and now taken it by force. Mm. Of course, it's, it's, you know, you know the expression, things fall apart, the centre cannot, cannot hold. hold. When you again. find people taking the law into their own hands, mm. it's indicative of the fact that you're not running the system. So it's mismanagement again, you know, because clearly money has been allocated. Mm. But these people are saying, we're not getting it. It's a bit like when Aisha Buhari said, where is the money yeah. that was meant to get to the people? They haven't seen it. So... Well, there has to be a way to address this. Mm. You know, they, they are doing. Otherwise, they might be setting a precedent, which is actually not. It's not helping it's because not you hear healthy, that expensive equipment. Right I mean, I heard this by one uh, a Greek specialist. He said, "Look, these people, even when you give them the money direct, they, they don't know the value of it. If you give them equipment direct, they don't know. So sometimes they go and sell the equipment That's they're crap. getting. Oh. So you, you know, yes, you want to help these farmers, but you have to now say, how do I intervene mm -hmm. so that my help is not abused? Because here is someone selling very expensive. All they're looking for is their daily bread. They're not understanding that this." equipment mm -hmm. is maybe twice or three times the value of what they get. But again, for. what that points to, Ekene, is the fact that proper needs assessment needs to be done. Exactly. Because of, it will and end up as, approach. yes, it will end up as white elephants. If you bring them these and they don't even understand how to use the equipment, yeah. you might as But well. you see, that also is to let us know that even all through down the, the chain, whether those who are giving them, making the money or the equipment available to them, mm -hmm. or those who are initially even signing out the contract for those who are making, there's a kind of disinterest. There's no real passion in mm -hmm. trying to see change through. Otherwise, why would you release money without doing a follow-up? Yeah. Why would you? Because this has been going on for years no before they now no evaluation. You need to do an evaluation. Most mm -hmm. people, if it's, it's money that, and if you care about the progress you're investing in, you need to follow up. You need yeah. to make sure that if it's not working one way, try another way. Don't just keep, unless you're getting Until your you cut get and you're looking the other way because you've got your cut anyway. Which would be unfortunate because yeah. the fact that you got the cut is not the essence. The whole essence is to To see make that. change happen. Yeah. Okay, so... We'll move to um, the Nation newspaper now, which I believe they are going to very quickly put up there. And it says, uh, Senator handling 300 NDDC projects. That's an uh, agency owes 3 trillion naira. And that's on page 7, already displayed there. And then PDP, we are yet to zone offices for 2023. Governors not divided. That's on page 8. Obono Obla fired for going beyond brief, uh, vice president be behind my sack. That's in quotes. That's according to him saying. Find out uh, uh, details of that story on page 8 of the Nation newspaper. Again, on uh, Biosa and Kogi 2019, uh, PDP accuses APC of plan to rig Biosa poll, PDP to present candidates to Jonathan, and police hand over Kogi PDP security chief to SARS. These and more stories you'll find on page 10 put together of the Nation newspaper. And um, 
8 held as army force Boko Haram bid to attack Lagos. That's on the front page. Scary. Uh, but continued on page 8. How Edo gov government attacked, organized attack uh, by Oshomole. Knox for national chair Obaseki over state APC crisis. That's on the front page there. Uh, but it's continued on page 8. Robbers invade Ibadan community on page 5 on 1.4 million, uh, seeking 5,000 NSCDC jobs on page 40. And that will be about it on the nation newspaper. If I may turn back, okay. Uh, the back of the nation uh, newspaper, it's a column there, Open Forum by Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu. Okay, The Coming Prosperity. And then the hardball by Mackindis uh, U-turn. Hardball, Mackindis U-turn. Please grab copies of it and find out what it is about. So let's come back to the front page again. Yeah, the three stories here. So let me list them again. <laughs> okay, I'll <laughs> so remind, you remind you. me. So <laughs> okay. I want to talk about the Delta Development Commission. Okay, yes. I also want to talk about um, the uh, senator who is ha handling them. So that's one story. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about the foiling of the Boko Haram attacks mm -hmm. in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another one that struck me now. I'm beginning to. Um, is it Obano Oh, the zoning. Um, okay. zoning. Yeah, okay. Like That's on page. Uh, yeah. the front so maybe page. I'll start with the zoning. You okay. know. So PDP. We are yet are saying, to zone offices for 2023. Yeah, again, I don't want to laugh, but it, it, I, wish I, was, I wish laugh? there was. A, <laughs> it's free. It's not even funny. That's really what I'm saying. I know. I, I wish understand. there was a suitable it's ridiculous. proverb to describe mm -hmm. what we're doing here because people are using the word zoning and they're declaring that they're yet to zone as if it's a normal state of affairs. Mm. They don't realize that it's actually a testament to the fact that our democracy has failed, that you're still openly declaring that you're zoning. Mm. Because what we're, I mean, hopefully you and I know that what we're moving towards is a meritocracy, a, yeah. a, a situation where you actually elect technocrats. The fact that we're doing all this zoning and, you know, godfatherism is not something to be proud of. So you hang it and up to say as a, almost like a banner and say, mm. now we have zoned. Mm. Almost like all you're doing is placating people. But even those people yeah, need to be true. educated that the fact that someone comes from your village doesn't mean he's the best man for the job. And mm -hmm. you should stop having those allegiances and start saying, look, I don't care where this person comes from. Let the best person Let them deliver. The I would even have a Yoruba man in the East. You know, when I was, when I was um, in Enugu, I used to say, look, um, I think it was a guy who ran for Lagos State, who, I forget his name now, um, who ran against... Um, Somebody, Ike Chuku, is, no, that, no, is he, it in Lagos ran, State? He, he's the alternative to Lagos State. He ran such a very good campaign. Okay. Come to me, though. He ran a very good campaign um, against um, our former governor of Lagos State. Oh, okay. And I really wanted him to come in. I said, well, look, if they don't want him, they should bring him to any Let him, let him prove. You know, oh. Because he had a plan. He had a strategy. And you could see from, so who cares where you're from? Mm -hmm. you know? So why, why you're openly saying, oh, I will, I will zone it? Is not is it's not it's it's only all it tells us is that you're stuck in the dark ages. It doesn't actually tell us that you are progressive. It doesn't tell okay. us that you have a vision for us mm -hmm. to take us out of this politics we're playing, partisan politics. Okay, it's Jimmy Agbaje you were Thank talking you. about. Thank <laughs> you. I've just been reminded. I, I said if I didn't hear, I would have still brought it up. <laughs> yes, it will, it will come I liked up his campaign. Okay. You know, I, I can fan him now because okay. he's not on the radar, mm -hmm. so to speak. But he was running such, at least from on the look of it, he, he was talking about what he would do for us. Hmm. You know, and he seemed to be somebody who was concerned about delivering. Uh, we know now, you know, post the event, you know, maybe he, he may not have done as well as or he may, but hmm. at least he had the right vision. So we're saying, look, forget where people come from. Let them just deliver. Okay, now are we going to get to that point in this country? Not if people are giving us headlines like <laughs> mm -hmm. we're yet to zone. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. It's such a backward headline. And it's an indication of where we are, an indication of the people oh, who are the at the pizza. helm. Either we just completely get Today rid of them altogether or they renew their mm. minds because they are not visionaries. I like the way you've put it, renew They're their not minds. They're visionaries, yeah. We to all need a renew renewal minds. of minds. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, and then looking at, you know, this um, Delta D Development Commission, mm -hmm. someone is actually handling 300 contracts, so to speak, on his own. And, and some of them he can't actually trace because the money being, again, is similar, similar to what we just discussed, the money being plowed in there some of them can not be followed through on. So money has been distributed or dispersed, and there's no way of tracing mm -hmm. what that money has been used mm -hmm. for. And this is typical of, you know, a lot of times we see certain contracts being done around us. Let's just use maybe speed bumps. There's some speed bumps that are not even worthy of the name speed bumps. They're there to just wreck your tires. Mm. Nobody has bothered to follow through and said, somebody was given a contract for that to thing. To do this. See that they just did on the road. It doesn't slow you down, but it just destroys your, your tires. Because even whether you go slow or fast over it, your tires will be spoiled. And just at least one that I've experienced. And I say to myself, who gave someone this contract? They uh -huh. ride over this every day and they haven't bothered to ask the question, uh -huh. is this money, you know, so why don't we learn to we get value from contracts as, as though they were our own personal, you know, income and say, I'll give you, a quarter of this, when you deliver, I'll assess it and I'll give you 
You know, very few people, I get the impression, are bothered about the quality of delivery or whether it's delivered at all. As long as the money is given off, you get your cut. Mm -hmm. And so we now need to have people who are vetting those who are distributing the contracts. We, yeah. we need to have policing all the way through the system. Monitoring Why properly. should one senator be in charge of 300? You can That's imagine so how powerful he is, what a kingpin he'll be in his own zone, and how much power he'll wield, because mm -hmm. the amount of the balleting that will go towards obtaining a contract from him, yeah. and, and you can imagine how much he'll put on, you know, so this is, you're just setting him up to abuse the system even further. Sure. So who gave that senator that kind of authority? That person too should be brought under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because how do you expect him to deliver, truly? You're, you're just getting him power drunk. That's okay, you're so doing. your last uh, story, which you talked yeah, about. Yeah, Lagos so. State, would you believe that? It's scary. You know, yeah, Boko Haram were set to attack, and, and when I read the story, I realized that they had had previous, do you say they had planned to attack universities in Lagos in previous times? And even the third mainland bridge, you know, we're busy going about our business. Nobody expects Boko Haram to place. target Lagos of all places. But apparently, but the good news is, so we mustn't be no, down. They foiled it. They mm. foiled it. And apparently, since I think 2016, they've arrested up to 60. These are bits of information we don't get to enough. Hear. I wish they would do hmm. more of this to reassure us I agree with rather you. than you know troubling us with things of positive hmm. id whether it's coming whether it's i know coming. we want something like this so that we have more confidence in the system so they're saying since 2016 they've actually arrested up to 60 members of the boko haram hmm. sect so these are things they should parade that kind of information to hmm. make us reassured that they're working. Yes, you know, and to know that they're security the personnel, yeah. whoever they are. Yeah, so we're grateful. Something. We're really grateful because it could have been a completely different story. Yeah, that we're all safe, especially this day. I mean, always we should be safe in our nation, if you ask me. Mm. So we'll go to the Guardian newspaper in the interest of time. I'm afraid, can okay, we have just four minutes or oh. three, about three minutes. So we'll stick to this. The <laughs> Guardian to newspaper and try not to, yes. <laughs> there are so many things that will distract one, really. Now, mm. courts grants uh, interstellar worldwide asset freezing. Uh, order over $285 million judgment debt on page 10, already displayed there. Uh, gov government can't cowers over IPPIS, ASU vows. That's on page four. Interesting. And then government extends uh, border closure to 2020. Um, page three, police arrest couple for buying two toddlers. That's on page 12. What kind of story? You wonder. Now, PDP not decided on 2023 presidential candidates. Uh, accuses APC of plotting crisis in party. It's on the front page there. Uh, you find it continued on page 6. And the big story is how government agencies flout a TSA policy. Experts seek end to leakages on receipt uh, hit 10 trillion naira. That's also on the front page. And on the back page of the Guardian newspaper, well, thankfully it's false. Enyimba Enugu Rangers qualify for CAF Confederation Cup group uh, stage. That's right there on the back page. Uh, you will find it. And F MFM down Ikechu Ile Chukus Heartland as Plato United, United Stone Lobby Stars. Also written there, you find it. There. And Rivers Angels beats Confluence Queens to 2019 Super Four Crown. Still on the back page, uh, st uh, sports news there. Can I, what's two stories? Oh. Wow. Um, I'm looking at the IPP. I and, they, and the ASU. Yes, and the ASU. Maybe I should start with the ASU, actually. Mm. Um, the fact that the lecturers are saying that they will not pay that. They, um, they will not pay system. through that yeah. means. I'm not sure I can say that I sympathize with them because this is something that goes beyond just the ASU, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yes. members it's of not, It's not a matter of it's, focusing it's a, it's on a complete, them yeah, see, you know, it's, it's to cover all the public servants. And it makes sense on the look of it because you have ghost workers. And one of the best ways to sift out ghost workers mm -hmm. is to have a single way of monitoring a centralized system. And it's so, aids and, transparency, and some of the really. arguments they make against it were not really clear. They mm, say they want the to maintain autonomy. And yet, yes. in the news, I think this morning, they're even saying how some lecturers, you know, they cut corners just basically they're corrupt as as though we didn't know because we have heard direct stories from people who attend these like you know these universities and mm. saying lecturers are forcing you to buy their books that they yes, printed lecturers are, and of course it's sex for great so we know that they're not without their issues and they need monitoring so why would they want to be autonomous they make out that they're saints they need to be watched just like everyone else so mm -hmm. i'm not sure we're on their side and now that they're threatening to say if you don't if you force us down this road we won't do our mm. job. Then maybe it's, it's time to sack them. Yeah, mine is. You know, why why are they work? I, I know I sound a bit harsh. <laughs> maybe it's time to give them that option of mm. if you don't want to work, you can walk. If you don't want to work, you can walk. So walk. let other people who are ready mm. to work and be accountable come on because. I, I really can't see why it's they want to, to separate themselves. It's going to age transparency. And you would think that, you know, lecturers will be happy to do so. Because if we're saying we want development and growth, why yeah. don't we start with that? Yeah, leaders? because your challenge to government should be, if we sign up to this and we don't get our salaries, then you have cause to yes. make noise. But not 
before the event, you're already saying, no, I don't want to. What is the problem, really? You haven't really made it clear to uh -huh. us. So that's not really apparent. And then the border closure, of course, we have to talk about that. Okay. You know, now Very we're hearing quickly, that it's been okay. extended to that's January 31st. Mm -hmm. um, 2020. 2020. <laughs> Next year. But the fact is, we want to see what it is, because apparently one of the headlines said until the government meets its objectives. Mm. What are those objectives? Apparently we still don't know what yeah, they are. So we need a measurable way of knowing at what point, because we, everyone accepts that we can't indefinitely mm. close borders. It will hurt us. So please, let's have a bit more information and transparency. All right. Thank you very much, Akene. We're going to end it at uh, this way. Thank you. It's always good to have you here. And this is where we call it a wrap uh, for Off the Press. We'll do this, continue through the week, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okui. Have yourselves a great day.